Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off Grid Van Life where we look at van conversions, lithium ion phosphate batteries, off grid power, basically everything in between that. And our objective is to help you to build out an awesome van to get on the road and to find adventure. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at changing the passenger side drive shaft in my camper van here. Essentially, over the Christmas period, we were in the van visiting family and doing all that sort of stuff. And we did quite a lot of mileage. We drove from Scotland all the way down to the south of England and back. Did well over a thousand miles, probably about a thousand five hundred miles over a couple of weeks uh, over Christmas. And uh, on that trip, I noticed grease starting to collect in the, in the wheel arch uh, when I had the tires changed while we were at my parents' place over the Christmas period. And uh, at that point, I knew that something was up with the uh, CV boot. And when I looked at it, I could see the, the CV, CV boot was split. And when I went about it and started looking at uh, what was involved in changing it, I realized that it's probably uh, more economical just to change the whole drive shaft. So to buy a kit, the boot and grease and the kit involved in changing that, it's about 30 pounds or thereabouts. You can buy an entire drive shaft for this. This was a Fiat Ducato 2005 model, it's the 2.8 liter JTD. You can buy that drive shaft for around 85 pounds. So it's about 50 pounds difference between a brand new drive shaft and then just the kit to fix uh, the CV boot. So I made the decision I'll just get the new drive shaft because uh, most of the work is actually put changing the drive shaft or at least getting the old one out to then put the new one in. Um, and then you then have to start breaking down the CV to put the new boot in and re-greasing it all after you've cleaned it and all that sort of stuff. So I decided for the one to 50 pounds difference in price, uh, I would just get a new one and uh, do away with the old one. So that's what we're doing here. So as I mentioned, it's a Fiat Ducato chassis. It's a 2005 model JTD uh, 2.8 liter uh, diesel. And uh, so I'm going to take you through this and hopefully it'll be helpful if you are in the same boat, you have a similar vehicle, same model or, or make or whatever. Hopefully it'll help you out uh, if you ever need to change the drive shaft on yours. Uh, it's not hugely complicated, uh, just a few things that you need to know. Um, and we've taken these out in and out over the years quite a bit. My dad has a very similar camper, as you know. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to take you through that now. This shows you the angle that we have uh, jacked this thing up to. Uh, the idea being that we are going to hopefully not have any oil drain out of the gearbox at such an angle um, because it's quite a mission to get oil back into this gearbox. Uh, it's easier on the C class than these A classes. Okay, so we have the wheel off. And essentially, obviously, this is the uh, drive shaft here that comes through the whole wheel assembly. So we have to take this big nut off. So this is torqued i can't remember the torque setting but it's something pretty big like 280 odd newton meters or something like that but i'll confirm that later on but the easiest way to actually get this off is to obviously undo that um, we put a couple of the wheel studs back in there just to use that as a point to hold onto here and then we'll get a big torque wrench onto there to, to break this and take that off and then once we've got that off we're going to take these four bolts off there 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 and there and then uh, this whole assembly will come off then and just drop down. We'll hang it and hold onto it um, to then be able to get the actual drive shaft out. So we'll update you guys shortly. That makes short work of it. So we have the new shaft that's going to go in here. I was interested to see at the end here that we don't have a place for a retaining ring or clip inside the gearbox. So there's actually, when this goes into the gearbox, there's nothing to hold it in place at all. Same is true of mine, and I was uh, concerned about that, so I posed the question to various forums and people and never got a reply. So I put it back without any form of a retainer. It was absolutely fine, two long trips. So this side obviously goes on the on the outside and this is where uh, let's go through the wheel spindle into the wheel spindle um, a smaller nut than what was on there so this is a 40 millimeter nut uh, what's on there currently is a 50 mil so we may just use that 50 mil nut because it's in really good condition I'd rather have that 50 nut because that's the one that we have a set of sockets for with a big big torque wrench uh, the torque in this thing is absolutely sublime 
think it's something like 290 newton meters or something ridiculous. Okay. And we've got it flopping over. I mean, it does flop over. But, uh, then it should be able to. Oh, getting some oil pouring out. Right, we're the second turn for the worst, but you can see here the um, boot is split completely there all the way around. So now the CV is completely exposed, so we would have had to have rebuilt this completely anyway. Um, <clears throat> a little bit more than we thought to actually get this off, so it turns out we actually undid all of these four bolts here to get the whole wheel assembly off, and then obviously these two up here that we pointed out before. Um, uh, so those are off there. And then that's now the um, uh, drive shaft loose, so we could just pull it straight out here, uh, which is what we're going to do now, and then slap the new one in, and then start putting everything back together to get it back down, and then we'll have to change the oil in the gearbox, because uh, we've had quite a lot of trip. You can see it busy pouring out there. So that's where we're at. It pulls out, eh? So we've got a um, breaker bar ready to, and now just busy talking this. Uh, previously we mentioned absolutely ridiculous talks uh, compared to what it meant is meant to be. It is meant to be 495 newton meters. That is one serious talk. So a serious talk needs a serious torque wrench, which that is. Lots of grunting and a final click. There you go. 500 newton meters. <laughs> so one of the things with these A-class uh, motorhomes is that it's quite difficult to get back in there uh, to stuff. So um, essentially under all of this stuff is where you would need to get to to fill the gearbox up. So I'm gonna be uh, draining what's left of the gear oil. Now that we've changed the drive shaft, I'm gonna to have to drain what's left of the gear oil out uh, so that I can fill the gearbox up with exactly 2.7 liters of gear oil. So that's what this uh, engine requires or this gearbox requires. Um, initially when Fiat manufactured this engine, they um, had put the amount of two liters of gear oil and then what they found is that uh, that was not enough to lubricate the fifth gear. So uh, they then re-issued um, the uh, quantity to 2.7 liters. And so 2.7 liters is what you need in order to lubricate your fifth gear properly. Uh, when I changed the gear oil in this engine previously, I removed the air filter and I was actually in the process of changing the whole um, radiator because the old radiator had sprung a leak. 
and uh, so because I'm not doing that now um, and so I, when I changed the gear oil previously it was just easier to do it that way uh, because I had everything out but in this case I don't have everything out so what I've got is a funnel system which I'm going to drop in over the back there and then I'm going to access where it fills up from underneath which I'll show you now. All right, so I've got my filler pipe in. So the way that this gearbox fills up is by this uh, breather. So this goes on the top of the gearbox in a specific place that is quite difficult to get to. So that's what it looks like. But essentially, it's right back in there. Um, let's see if I can get this thing to focus where we want to get to. I'll try and show you what it looks like where the pipe's gone in, uh, but I'm not sure that the camera will even get down there. But yeah, essentially you're looking for this thing here, which is on the top of the breather for the gearbox. So it'll take quite a while to fill the gear oil up this way, but uh, it's so difficult to get right in there. I just can't see that you would be able to get a bottle of oil in there to do it. So I just do this while I'm doing other bits and pieces, just general maintenance on the van. Just keep topping up the funnel there. So, yeah. Alright, well there we go, so there's the old drive shaft, CB boot's completely gone, we did quite a lot of mileage with it, a lot of the grease is gone, there's probably a lot of dirt and water ingress and stuff like that in there, uh, so it was definitely, definitely needed some work, um, certainly would have needed to rebuild the CB completely, so um, as I said earlier, it just kind of made sense to just replace the whole thing, um, because it's really cost effective to do that. And as it was, it took us quite a while just because there was just a lot of uh, bolts that were difficult to get off and uh, various things like that. Uh, so if if we were going to be rebuilding this, it would have taken obviously a lot longer because then you're stripping this whole thing down, breaking it down, cleaning everything, re-greasing everything and then putting a new boot on and stuff. So I'm pretty happy with the decision just to put a new one in for that peace of mind. But yeah. Hopefully this video has been helpful for somebody that needs to change the drive shaft on their Ducato. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.